Dearly Father, help us to make the right decisions for the people of Oklahoma County. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, the Father, the Lord, the um, looking for a motion to approve the minutes from September 21st, regular meeting, and December 26th, uh, special meeting. So moved. Support. Move is supported. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Uh, motion carries. We note there was one opposing the vote. <clears throat> Just to the record here, right? Um, next item. Public comment. Limited to three minutes per person. Please identify yourself and your township. Everybody wants to go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Um, I went to the ACCO aid board meeting last week and I heard some things that were very concerning to me. And I've spoken to some of the board members over there and I'll speak to the whole board as a whole at their next meeting. But I, I come before you asking you um, because I know with your agreement with the ACCOA, you do have oversight and you are responsible for the millage funds being made sure that they are being used to the benefit of Alcona County seniors. The first thing I heard was that the property that was bought in Harrisville or Harrisville Township, no questions were asked before that was purchased, whether that was buildable land, whether it was hazardous waste on it, whether it was contaminated or cleanup or wetland, none of that was asked before that was purchased. For, for future use. I don't know about you, but when somebody piece of, buys a piece of land and they don't know if they can build on it, I call that land speculation, regardless of where the funds are coming from to purchase that. I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned how our citizenry will look at this, that if the ACCOA has funds to purchase land, no idea where they can build on it, why do they need a millage? I'm concerned that citizenry will listen to that or, or think that, especially when there's an article in Alcona Alpina paper saying that half of the funds they have are, are come from grants and funds other than millage. I see a lot of people saying, well, why do we need a millage? So I'm concerned about that. Second thing I learned is that donations to the food bank, unless they are specifically denoted that they are to go to food, do not have to go to food. They can go to maintenance. They can go to marketing. They can go to anything else other than food. So I wonder how many people are aware of that when they're donating to the food bank, those funds don't have to go to food. The third thing I noticed there was there were signs throughout the facility at the senior center saying that if you have not been vaccinated, you have to wear a mask. Now, the ACCOA is not a private club that can do whatever they want. They use taxpayer funds. They have to follow the Open Meeting Act and they cannot discriminate based on race, creed, color of your skin, religion, or your medical status. That is discrimination. I know when we brought that up to your attention, the signs here on the courthouse were removed shortly thereafter. I do not believe that those signs are legal. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a judge. I would ask you to talk to Prosecutor Weichel and get his opinion on that. My opinion is they are not legal because they are discriminating based on medical status. The last and most concerning thing I saw I want to know if you, the board, know that very few people in our county are eligible to vote for the board of directors of the ACCOA. The board that controls almost a million dollars in taxpayer funds is selected by a very few individuals, only individuals that are receiving a service like Meals on Wheels or in-home care can vote for that. If none of you who are seniors are receiving those funds, you could not vote on these people who are vote or who are overseeing a million dollars of taxpayer funds. It's such a small amount of people who can vote for that board. I ask you, would you allow the sheriff's department and the deputies to decide how much funds they should be used or how what they should pay? Would you allow the equalization department to decide what their wages should be? 
If you were at a fair, would you allow vendors to decide how much they should pay? It's a small group. It's not representative of the total number of taxpayers who are being asked to pay for a millage, only to have the people who are most likely to get the services vote on the services they want and how much of them they can get. It's not representative. It's not good oversight. So I would appreciate it if you would take to heart what I'm saying. You do hope have oversight, not only as officials, but as affected members of our community. I know you can talk to some people there. We are continuing to talk questions that I think that need to be answered. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Gary. Gary Mitchell Township. I got this in the mail the other day and I'm really struggling with it. It says, dear Pat, taxpayer, I'm doing an audit of your principal residence exemption and need the following items from you. Please provide a copy of each listed below and return with this form. They are looking for a driver's license, front and back, voter's registration, vehicle registration, and a copy of my first and second pages for my tax forms. Basically, well, I'm being picked on for the following line. I also notice that you are using a post office box in Lincoln, and I will need an explanation as to why this is different from my above parcel. In America, I got approved where I live. I mean, this is ridiculous. All that stuff. Now, back in 2011, I filled out this PRE form. It said, that under penalty of perjury, if I lied about my principal address, I would go to, I, I believe I would be prosecuted and go to jail. I just checked that out with Tom. He said, yeah, he wouldn't do that. I mean, this is ridiculous. And I'll tell you what this is stemming from. In my opinion, this board needs to start standing up for our constitutional rights. That's the first thing you guys raise your hand and swear to. And I don't believe you're doing it. And as long as our rights are gonna keep getting eroded, when I gotta go through, all this, which I am not going to provide, I'm providing enough to prove that that's my residence. I'm going to tell you, we are on our way down. And one of these days, you're going to start finding out that as the population starts disappearing, you're going to have nobody standing behind you when they start doing this stuff to you. Okay, thank you. Um, next, please. Jerry Klingenberg, um, Harrisville Township. Um, I support the resolution brought by grassroots to have oversight over the ACCOA. I think that proper oversight is needed. The MEDC, the MEDC, so the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, I guess is the primary funding for this um, low income housing bill. And if you're not against the MEDC, I will not vote for you. The MEDC is tied to the World Economic Forum. Those are the guys they want us to eat bugs and like it. And they want us to own nothing and be happy. And the World Economic Forum is tied to the MEDC. They like are in collaboration. So you can take a look at the MED, the, the World Economic Forum page. It's really woke and it promotes all social agendas and green policy. <laughs> yeah, they don't want us eating steak, just bugs. Uh, the World Economic Forum are the ones in collaboration with the MEDC. I do not consider using the MEDC, MEDC money in our county as they are directly tied to the World, World Economic Forum. I would suggest uh, someone research the ties to the, w, the WEF and learn for yourself why this is a really bad idea. I also do not consent to the use of Dominion machines or any of the machines. They are data collection devices. There's hardly any time left before the November election. They installed Biden and he is sending migrants everywhere, which is human smuggling and trafficking. It's uh, time to act now. We need accuracy, not efficiency. We want to use the tech, not the tech using us, i.e. our data. Please provide oversight into the possible implementation of programmable cryptocurrencies and central bank digital currency. The social credit score is on its way. A resolution to the legislative branch would be advised. I don't consent to any of that stuff. It's not a game. This isn't a game. This is our children's future, and it's all in our hands. And I agree with Gary that we need to be following constitutional principles, or we wouldn't have to deal with all this stuff. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Hi, Lisa Turek, Harrisville Township. I just wanted to let you know. I know I am the same thing. 
um, that I was at the ACCOA last Friday, and I know I spoke to Bill about this, but I just wanted to bring it up that twice I was told that the uh, ACCOA ran out of senior meals when I called asking for a meal on Friday. I was told in the morning, and then I was told in the afternoon, even though I know people who went there and got a meal and filled out their form, no problem. When I got there, I was told they were out of food. I did fill out a form. I was eventually presented with a meal, but I was charged $8 for it when I know that it's a suggested donation of $3 for a senior. I'm 61, I'm over 60. And even somebody there said, no, it's a $3 donation. But no, I was told $8 for me. So I paid my $8, gave my $2 donation and, and gave $10 to pay for the meal. But I don't, I believe I was treated differently than other people who went in there for the exact same thing on Friday. And I'd like to know why. I also agree there should be more oversight on the ACCOA. If things will happen to me, they'll happen to somebody else. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Anyone else? Terry Goldstrom, Hans County. Um, I'm hearing rumors about the senior center and the fact that if they do plan on going with the low income housing, that it's going to be contractors from Detroit. My question is, I guess, if this is true, why are we not giving it to local contractors? And if we do decide to go with the Detroit group, is anybody going to do a background check on these companies? We don't know them. We don't know their, their reputation or how fair they are. Um, just a question to put out there, something to think about. And I do believe that the senior center does need some oversight. <clears throat> um, and again, these are rumors, and these rumors need to be addressed because they're running rampant and people are starting to get really, really angry because nobody can get a straight answer from anything. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, how about online? Did I see anything online? Okay. Let me take another couple of notes here for a minute. Sorry, everybody. Okay, I need to add a few items to the agenda, please. Uh, under unfinished business, um, uh, EMS union contract, um, MGT or a new business would be MGT uh, versus metrics for our um, recording, I guess. Yeah. Uh, dashboard, that's what it is, but dashboard. And then um, under new business, the November 16th. Uh, meeting uh, date when requested to have a discussion about maybe changing that. I'm also going to wait for Jim's request. Okay, then under uh, new business, we also put the register of these requests for a full time position. <clears throat> Can you also add the budget for the commissioner? Absolutely. Can I just do it under on um, uh, yeah, finance? Whenever you do. Okay. Thanks. So. Okay. We got all stuff we can all together. All right. With that being said. <laughs> We'll move into no presentations today. So we're going to go to the unfinished business with the uh, Doug Chief EDC Chairman, Connector Nation Consulting Services Agreement. Yeah, as we all know, um, Doug was in here a couple of uh, weeks ago talking to us uh, regarding uh, uh, regarding Elkhorn County hiring a consultant to work with um, Fresco Electric and Gas regarding broadband for the entire uh, Elkhorn County. We have in front of you now that that PIEG has now signed our letter of intent. Uh, things are starting to move forward, and now it's time that for us to uh, sign an agreement with Connected Nations for their services regarding consulting um, in our broadband and our striving to get broadband for the whole county. Um, 
Kelly has talked about this. I think we all know about it. We we're just really waiting for the letter of intent to be signed. Um, I can tell you this morning we had an ARPA meeting. Uh, you have the minutes in front of you. Um, and there was a motion by Bill Thomas and second by Dan Gockview to recommend to the Board of, board of Commissioners that they enter into an agreement with Connected Nation. Uh, the ARP, opportunity also recommends that ARPA funds will be used for the payment of their services. And that was approved in the roll call vote 3 1. So I'd like to make a motion that we authorize our chair to sign the services agreement with Connected Nations. Uh, Move to support it. So the purpose of um, having Connected Nation part of this is that they will be able to uh, pursue all the other kind of grants and funding that are available out there right. uh, for our county in order to get this done, right. along with uh, Presque Gas and Electric also doing that same thing. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I attended... Doug and I attended a meeting last week and I asked for county put in uh, by uh, Senator Peters office uh, regarding the possibility I'll, I asked the county is looking in the same direction that Alcona County has went but they're way behind us they haven't even mapped yet. It was a very informative meeting and I asked the county has already hired a consultant to help them with their with their strive to get all these grants. There's tons of money available now. For broadband, and it's, it just takes take someone to get out there and get help apply for these grants, do the work necessary to get these grants, and also, and you look at their scope of work, they're going to help us go around the whole county, explain to all our citizens exactly what's going to happen with this broadband initiative and what everybody is going to needs to expect. Cost on this thing. Yeah, yeah you look at the back page here. Yeah, Forty nine thousand five hundred. They would not to exceed forty nine thousand yeah. five hundred. Right. Yeah, Which I is... need to vote from the board on the ARPA recommendation before you. Okay. Yeah. So the motion is. What well, was your motion? My motion was that authorize the chair to sign. Okay, and then we'll do the other motion for that. Yeah. For that. Um, Amount of money. Yeah. Using our plan. No. No. You you it's kind of cart before the horse. He he made motion to sign an agreement with uh connect nation. Okay. Right. 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 We'll do the other one afterwards. Um, well, we'll negate that if we don't get approval on the other one, I guess, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We're not gonna rescind a motion. Yeah. All right, so this is money. Any other discussion? Okay, then uh, roll call, please. Brennan? Yes. Freddie? Yes. No? Yes. Gothier? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Okay, then I would like to make a motion uh, for the commissioners that, that they, uh, I don't want to say it, they approve the ARPA committee's recommendation for the agreement with Connected Nations and that ARPA funds of $49,000, $49,500 will be used for the payment of those services. Move, um, and seconded, seconded uh, by Terry. Any further discussion? The selection of that component to 500 that we yep. go through. And addition to? Okay. All right. If there's no other discussion, then we'll do a roll call. Thompson? Yes. Ma? Yes. Gothier? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Craig? Yeah, yes. Okay, then we will go to the next unfinished business will be uh Carolyn, would you like to would you do a brief uh on the MS union contract or what sure. we need to do here? Um it would be our our personnel's recommendation and if you recall we were in closed session we reviewed the EMS contract and at this time we would move to ratify and approve the chairman of the Alcona County Board of Commissioners. 
to sign a contract between the County of Arizona and the Mass Bargaining Unit and the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 324, for the period of July 2022 to December 31st, 2025, upon the deal with the contract. Uh, moved and supported. <clears throat> Any other discussion? This is just to clean up the paperwork for what we decided last. All right, uh, roll call, please. Reggie? Yes. Bremen? Yes. Gothier? Yes. Small? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Both carries. Um, okay, on to new business. Um, let's get the claims out of the way. Plenty of claims already? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the pre-authorized claims and open claims presented for payment between September 21st, 2022 and October 4th, 2022 for check numbers 148735 to 148845 and e-check numbers 950 to 1960, 1961 for a grand total of $1,300,351.60. Who seconded? Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Small? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Gothier? Yes. Brumman? Yes. Brady? Yes. Uh, next in new business is the Fund 561 Fair 2022 Budget Amendment. Who can speak to that for me, please? The budget amendment was <clears throat> requested by the fair. They took in more money than they had anticipated. I believe you all got the worksheet that goes with that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the email and all of that. Package, Trina. Should have been in your packet. Oh, you got it. All right, good. <laughs> so it looks like the overall bottom line was uh, increased by. About thirty six thousand or twenty four thousand. Mm -hmm. Had a good year at the fair. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Bill, mm -hmm. and everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, any more discussion? Well, we need a motion, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to amend the budget for the uh, as requested. Of course, you want to support it. Any discussion? Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Reggie? Yes. Gothier? Yes. Yeah. Brownman? Yes. No. Yes. Next item. Uh, all right. It's been asked me, asked me to run by the commissioners. Is there any appetite to change the November 16th meeting date this year? Have to do that. Well, you know what it's based on <laughs> in Northern Michigan. You know how it works. But if nobody ends up behind it, then that's fine. I'm okay with keeping it. But I mean, I'd like to say it wouldn't be either the Monday the 13th or the 14th or something. I just don't think there's going to be anybody here. here. Plus, you know, we need to have the meeting. For sure, because we've got possible budgets to approve and all that. But yeah, we have to I can do the 14th or the 18th or the 11th. And I'm, I have no problem with moving. Good with me. You the 14th? I'll make a motion that we're at November 16th meeting to November 14th at 1 30 p.m. Motion? Second. Yeah. Second. Any other discussion? Okay, roll call. Gothier? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Brahman? Yes. Small? Yes. Freddy? Yes, but it's more it's going to make the headline of the Harrisville paper. It's going to be front page <laughs> board who's meeting to. 
they got anything still? So, no, if they finish the Greggy verse for Anyway, okay, so that's uh, done. Next item MGP versus Munetrics for our uh, recording. So um, it's been brought to the attention that uh, one of the reasons where we went to Munetrics a couple of years ago is because uh, there was grant available to cover half of the cost. The use of that and it was for a three year contract, yeah, a couple of year, a couple of year contract, but anyway, it was it cut the cost considerably. And uh, we got a pretty good sales pitch on the information you can use and you know how it can be used. But uh, now, before that, we use a company called MGT to do our dashboard. And um, I would admit that the Munetrix is a little more hands on in that, uh there's something that has to be entered a little differently. I'm sorry, that's a metrics is the more one that's a little more difficult to use. Yeah. Um, so the cost for both services is about the same. In fact, uh, yeah. your metrics is slightly higher by $14.32. Um, so that's the difference. If we're going to use them for our posting, uh, for this year's dashboard, we'll have to move on this pretty quick. What was the difference in $14.32. One was $6,014.32. That was Unetrix, and the other one was $6,000. So, $1,400. $6,000. $6,000. Yeah. $14.32. That's all. The difference is? $14.32. Okay. I thought you were talking about yeah. No, I was not okay. going to. I speak on that. Yeah, go ahead. I think another thing that, that in my mind is considered is too is that Unetrix has been sold. They, they there's new people running it. I just think they've changed a little bit in direction. Um, we surely don't get as much um, requirements from them and all that. I mean, um, we really thought we'd be able to use Metrics a lot better, a lot more than what we have used it. And uh, I know MGT, they do everything. We don't have to do a thing. They they do it. It's not any of our responsibility. We don't have to do the paperwork. We don't have to do anything. And I think for those couple of reasons, that I'll make a motion that we go back to our dashboard to MGT services. Have a motion. Second, motion support. Any other commentary? Have we have staff? No mm -hmm. preference. Uh, staff is what recommended the change. Okay. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I know that. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay. Let's uh, roll call it. Kathy? Yes. No. Yes. Brennan? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Brady? Yes. Roche cares. Thank you, everybody. Next item a register of deeds request for uh, moving their part time employee to full time. Um, we have a recommendation from personnel. Split recommendation from personnel. Uh, one is for it and one is against it. Um, we don't necessarily have to make a move on this today, but it's, um, for the sake of uh, Missy, well, I mean, she sent us all the information on it. Um, I don't think we need to make a big but it's it's a matter of this: um, do we table it and talk about it over the course of you know the rest of the year, or is everybody, does anybody feel strongly enough to do something about it right now? I a motion to make it full time. Okay, I have a motion to in support for change that part time to full time. Could we ask for an effective date, please? First thing. Oh, yeah, which was also, yeah, I'm sorry, I was like to say personnel recommended first of the year if it was to be a possibility. Um, that employee is only, how long is that 
like like four, five, six months, right? We've had that for a year. Over a year. Has it been over a year already? Yeah. Wow. A year and five months. Year and five months. Okay. Um, the correspondence and, and two talks with Missy. Um, their their department is busier due to the um increase in inquiries and property transactions that have been happening over the last couple of years. Um, that's the reason that she not on its own. I'm not, I'm not 100% positive myself. Um, it's warranted right now, but uh, but we're going to vote, we'll find out everybody. Thinks. I would just ask them what department is not as busy as they were. Or has not had anything added to them in the last year or two years. Right, right. Every department I'm will sure like to know who they are. Sure. Anybody else? Well, let's roll call it. Not here? No. Drummond? No. Reggie? No. Ma? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Motion defeated. I that doesn't mean it's defeated forever. I can ask again. Oh, I, I was I just going to say, um, personnel has no problem with him coming back in six to nine months if they so choose. The door is open. Yeah, it's a fluid, uh, it's always. The fluid situation. So, it has been great. Uh, is that it for new business? Well, I'll do that under, under our finance. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's it for new business. Then we'll move on to finance. Uh, first item for finance is we need to schedule a budget workshop. The workshop. Yeah. Do we need to talk about what remains for 2022 yet? Or is that discussion? Would that be part of that discussion? Sure, but I'll give you the homework so you can check it out. Oh. So then, when we have a workshop, everybody can do very well versed on what we're going to talk about. And what we do and do not have. That's right. There are quite a few that are not filled out. And then, um, we have gone through all of the wages. For all the departments that were turned in, they've got the insurance, as you know, has all been calculated at 15 and a half percent. We still will need decisions on um, what insurance, I mean, there's, there's a lot. That's why I asked um, for the budget workshop. Mm -hmm. We have the one quote from our current insurance company that did, and it is reflected in there. Uh, the FICA and everything has been recalculated by the court's office. There are a few things that I would ask that you consider um, before the meeting is the indirect costs. We have, um, there's some conflicting information on some departments that um, We'll discuss in finance, but that is a board decision on the indirect costs. And also keep in mind that you had also agreed to do the cost sharing for the um, payment in lieu of taxes from the federal government for the townships that was not calculated. And that will need to be calculated as well. Um, yeah, we should have it next week for sure. Keep this momentum up. We're having like, and this is this is honestly the, the fastest pace we've ever been working on a budget to get it done. At time. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm happy. Let's do uh, everybody you have Tuesday available? Yeah, that's the day she's going. Oh, you're gone Tuesday? It's, it's, no, we can uh, do Monday. No, I'll work it out. Monday is worse. Monday is worse. <laughs> All right, <laughs> what, about, what about Wednesday? Uh, about Thursday. No. Tuesday. 
Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. it is. Tuesday. What's your Tuesday at uh, two o'clock? Is that too late? Yeah, yeah. Tuesday, 11, yeah. Tuesday 11, two o'clock. 11 or two? Tuesday, Tuesday 11, 11 at two o'clock. <laughs> okay, we'll make it happen. Put a motion for me. All right. I have to be posted. Yeah, we'll have to post it. Workshop, not a special meeting. I don't want to vote. The workshop. Get out of hand. Anyway, um, all right, so that's good. Uh, finance, so any other uh, money for us to move around? Dan, Cheryl, mm -hmm. as far as having the vote on? No, I don't think so. Okay, that's first. Very good. Um, that's it for finance, then. Huh? We'll move on to the personal report. The only other thing the personnel has um, provided us with a copy of a letter regarding the resignation of the deputy sheriff um, effective October 17th. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Treasurer's report. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Trina, did we ever hear back from? From MERS on that other program that they were trying to turn around as far as I just heard from them this morning. Actually, they're okay. supposed to be sending that to me in the next day or two. Okay. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a long yeah, time. We've been asking them a long time too. So I think they'll actually be able to do. Okay. Now, Treasury report. Uh, we received our funds from the tax sale. We had those allocated out. Um, like I had mentioned prior this year, we had one claim. Um, I haven't heard anything in regards to the class action suit in a while. So everything is still kind of hurry up and wait. Really haven't heard much um, other than the bills that the counties received for. <laughs> The services that the attorneys are providing. Um, there's not a whole lot happening. Um, kind of business as usual. We've had a good turnout for the townships. They've been pretty consistent this year with their um, cleanup. And that's really all. We're just keeping up on getting ready to send out dog uh, reminder, dog license reminders. And working on budget stuff. So. Okay, thank you very much. Search report. Um, 44 North will be here on the 19th to present the 2023 um, health insurance quotes and to bring their other quotes and discuss the options with the board. Um, the public accuracy notice was received too late to be published in the weekly paper. So the townships are posting them locally and it's also posted on the county website and on the county entrances. Uh, local clerks have also received their ballots, so they're starting to um, process absent voter applications as well. And that's all we have. Okay. That's the report. Communications are in your packet. Uh, look at your leader. Um, I would like to start committing reports. Um, Can I, can Tony and uh, Mr. Smiley? Yes. Can we, do you have a few minutes after the meeting today? I can talk to you about trying to set up a date to uh, meet with the village. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to get that done. And I apologize for not getting back to you guys last week. Okay. I think I saw Tony had a missed call from Tony. I might have, I don't know, but I didn't call no him. Problem. He didn't leave me a message. I didn't call him back, but I do want to get that resolved today. Let's set a date, get it done. So, sounds good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, other than that, I know anything. So, attended district health uh, meeting and also corrections meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, report. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Cool. 
Well, with the ACCOA and they, they've had some complaints, uh, the FOIA rules that they have, the complaint was that they're too many, too long. Um, they are also uh, grumbling over the food situation that was brought up. Uh, they did purchase the 109 lot uh, for a little for almost $10,000. There's 9,979, something on that order over here in Harrisville. Um, the library uh, had made a motion to use Curtis as a branch, not a district, that the decision at their board was that the district portion was, had blew out the budget that they had previously thought could be just when they tried to figure out MERS and a few other things for three people versus 40, uh, it really got out of whack uh, along with the way that was voted at Curtis to uh, basically deed the property and the building over to the district, but that included more maintenance that they had not budgeted for. So rather than get in already in under the, uh, the basically underwater, they voted to, if, if Curtis wants to, they will do a, a branch versus uh, a district. Um, for the road commission, uh, the bridge on 41 will be on track to open, I believe 10, 15. And um, we're gonna have, the wells have to be tested this coming year for, uh, down at the old landfill, plus they're making them the, uh, they have to create a driveway uh, off the roads, which will be a cost. And they've had a problem with, uh, in front of the clinic, the clinic wanted a, a generator, so they got everything set up. They got the pad, the generator, the box for electricity and stuff. When they went to drill for the electrical lines, they, they were, the borer would not, company said they wouldn't do it because there's fiber lines in the road and nobody could figure out when that happened and actually they traced it and it was in the easement for a while and then it got in the road right and then back out into the easement so it happens right in front of the clinic with all the constructions going on in that area they, they haven't figured out who owns the um, line and until they do that there's no boring of crust because the MDOT wants them to cut a 12 foot section and slope it in and they just can't do a hole because you can't pad it back down and, and otherwise it'll always be a dip. So the clinic is on a hold till they can figure out who owns it or even if it's live, that could be just an old one that nobody seems to know back in the 80s. They found that we went back that far as where they had to get companies out of the business. So, that's what I know. So with the library thing, is that the whole district library concept? As far them? as the library board, yes, they've it's just gonna be as it was. It will be two entities and an offer to the Curtis okay. joined as a branch. Okay. And then there still be more discussions on that. So okay. down the road it will be looked at again as a district or they moving towards the district, or they're just gonna right now it's standard. it's at a standstill. Okay. Uh it hurts the employees okay. more so than the uh, the uh, the district itself. The concept is better. Mm -hmm. uh, even the older library board members that were there would prefer to be a district. Has some <laughs> options that they don't have now, but to get the employees into that over the hump, it would it hurt. And so mm -hmm. they decided that they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to uh, destroy. 20 years of service. So they're going to revisit it. Somewhere. They can revisit it anytime. It's just right now, it's, okay. it's a dead issue. Yeah, thank you. Can okay. I ask a question in regards to the library? Sure. Because we use the jingle signs and it's separated out as a separate entity. The Curtis Township Library is a separate entity and it get allocated based on their population mm -hmm. right now for the penal fines. What if they're considered a branch, if they're still a separate entity? So that causes me a little bit of concern in regards to the funding. Right. They, at this point, they would have to work. First, they got to find out even if Curtis wants to be a branch. And if they do, then all those um, scenarios would have to be worked out about the, the taxes and the, uh, the millages and so forth. Because if, if they, I mean, there's, if they decide they don't want to be a branch and it stays the way they are, then nothing really changes in their millages. 
So at the next meeting, maybe it would be beneficial to have somebody communicate with the treasurer's office. Sure. So that everybody can be educated how it's supposed to work. Uh -huh. Cool. Carolyn. Um, I reported that Sunrise had been unofficially told that they had passed their CARP testing and that they would have a three year certification. We did get that in writing um, for our meeting last Thursday, I'm sorry, last uh, Wednesday. The 1 1 board meeting um, <coughs> was fairly routine. We are thinking about October 2 1 1 board meeting. But there will be the full board meeting in November, as normally scheduled. One thing that I did send out to some of the department heads a piece of information uh, last week our Northeast Mission 211 is handling phone calls for those who are having issues because of the hurricane. Um, they're answering calls that are taking place in Florida. And I think it demonstrates the tremendous reach that 211 has across the nation and I, I think it's a really cool thing um we reported that we had sent i had advertised in the newspaper for the op and the opioid for those who might be interested we did not get a response we have now sent out letters uh i think 12 or 13 have gone up now we've got a couple more still to go and the letter invites them to a meeting on the 13th. I'm not sure. I, I have to look it up. Um, and we are hoping that some of the people that the letter went to have already indicated their interest in it. And so we will see what happens with that. Um, 911 board um, reviewed their budget for 2023. And if they haven't submitted it, uh, their meeting was just yesterday. I suspect they have not submitted it yet. They will be submitting it. Um, Cedar Lake Improvement Board uh, met last Friday. Um, we are moving forward with demolition of the house on the property that we bought at the northwest part of Cedar Lake. Those are the primary things that I've been working on. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're down to the last public comment, sec comment section. Uh, five minutes limit. Uh, identify yourself and your uh, township, please. Yes. All right, Johnson Hershel Township. Um, Alpena News in the September 20th edition, I think, had the, uh, the report of what the county had uh, settled with their unions, wage increases, everything, all the specific. I don't know how that got to the Alpena News. I know historically we have not released those here. Um, I think it would be a good thing. Uh, I don't see a reporter anywhere online and nobody's here. We used to always have someone here who was covering these meetings and covering these things and making requests of information. I would like the board to consider developing a press release for contracts for any other items. Uh, the fair the fair amount right there, and that's a great thing to hear, but nobody's going to see it. It's not going to be in the paper. Nobody's going to do anything. And uh, if you don't do a press release, they're not going to pick it up. I guess unless they call you and want to do a story. So I'd just like to consider the board consider doing press release, get it out there, open news, and the review, and let them know what has happened and what's been going on, especially union contracts. What day was the paper? I'm sorry, I'm not so. Uh, I pulled it up here. Um, September 20th, like you said. Yeah, it was okay. the. Uh, I'll look it up. Sorry. September 20th, just sure. union deals have been reached and they get all the percentage increases and, and uh, I mean, it's all public knowledge, but it, at least it gets the public and I can know what. All right, thank you. Next, for public comment, please. Gary. Gary Vanoff, Mitchell Township. Uh, I've been at the uh, senior meetings over the last two months now. And it seems like there's just been too many things that have been done at the last minute, like the um, changing of the public comment section, um, having FOIA submitted that roughly 10 days later, come back with a whole different thing. It gives the appearance that there's just not a sense of transparency coming from, from that entity. And I, I think if things were more transparent, 
and information was coming forth in a more open manner, I think you wouldn't be getting the comments and the and the things going around town that are going around. I, I do believe most of this is self-inflicted. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Next. Wait. Okay. Hey, Avery, Caledonia Township, Executive Director of ACCOA. So I want to give you guys the Okay, bro. Yeah. So I'll give this for your record as well. And so this is the community needs assessment that was completed by our Region 9 AAA, also known as NEMSCO, Northeast Michigan Community Service Action uh, Agency. There are also our, our community action agency. They're the ones who determine services within our community for things like Head Start, homelessness, uh, our senior services. They're the partners that we use and partner with when we are providing services in the community. So they just completed their report as of September 19, and I kind of put together a quick snapshot for you. So you, if you don't want to read the report, it's good information, it's over 60 pages, but I want to highlight a few pages for you. So we put together this beautiful little PowerPoint snapshot for you at the top of the first page. It basically talks about where are we at. I said, of Elkona County, 17% of us are considered in poverty. And this is based off of their community need assessments, as well as the ask the Alice report, which is a report that's put up by United Way. Alice stands for asset limited, income constrained, and employed, which means you may not be considered yourself maybe not at uh, an income level that's the, where the federal guidelines might be, but you may be underemployed. So you may have a job. You're not like you're living on the system. You just be making a work in a job that's not making enough money for you to save up to go to college, save up to own your own home. So based on these reports, they found that there are five of the top things that we are struggling with, not only in Oklahoma County, but in their service region, which includes 12 counties. So that's on page 22. So I'll, I'll, I'll just pull you guys want to thumb to that and we'll just go over just really quickly because it's not my report to really share, you know, because it's public information, but I think it's important, like Ben said, it, you know, our commissioner or former commissioner Johnson said, is that somebody needs to know about this. So they say the top five, number one is transportation. People can't get to and from work or to and from their, their hospital. Number two is housing. They're saying that basically people are paying over 30 to 40% of their income in housing. So they're not getting access to quality housing. Licensed child care. Like I said, licensed child care is we're, we're in a child care desert. Jobs with livable wages and benefit. And then number five is lack of specialty medical providers. This is our community action agency. This is not something that somebody invented. This is the people who help service our community. We know our community. We've been our community partners for a, a long time. So I just figured I, I share that report. So with my remaining time, I'm just going to be positive. Rom, it's a pleasure to see you today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bill, always great to see you. I appreciate your 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 positiveness and your willing to to sacrifice <laughs> to work <laughs> as a permission because a lot of people don't don't appreciate that. Thank you. Adam, I appreciate you and appreciate your leadership. Mr. Goffer, I thank you for everything that you're doing, especially in my community, because I'm, I'm in Spruce and Herbert Lake. So I appreciate that. Mr. Small, great haircut as always, looking dapper. You know, so, so you know, because look, I, I get it. We're not, we're not, we're not in the business of everybody's gonna like every decision that we make, but you're at rest assured. You guys start off with your meeting with a prayer asking to make the best decisions. That's what I do. I get up every morning. I'm also a pastor, okay? I also have a call in my life to love people, regardless if they don't like me back. But I love people, and I'm going to do my job, regardless if you like that or not. I'm going to work with people. I'm going to build bridges and not walls, okay? I'm going to tell myself a lot. That's about it, Lenny. All right, ladies, <laughs> it was a pleasure to see you guys, because I haven't forgotten about you. That was really important. I wanted to spend more time than what I had to tell you how I appreciate you. So thank you. All right. Anybody else for public comment?
Everybody here? How about online? Sometimes I get in trouble for not waiting to see if somebody wants to do it online. <clears throat> I don't see anything in the chat. All right, then um, we are down to commissioners' additional comments, concerns. Anybody? Okay, then the meeting is adjourned to the next regular meeting on October 19th. The finance meeting. Yeah. To do something